Hey guys, before this video starts, I just wanted to stress that this video is just a joke and a political satire and is not meant to be taken seriously in the slightest way. As those of you who have seen my previous political satires know, I make fun of politicians from both political parties as it is all in good fun. And just last week, I made a political satire where I made fun of Donald Trump, so I felt like it would only be appropriate to do one of Joe Biden now, so I do not alienate any of my amazing viewers. I am a sketch comedian, or at least a self-described one, who wants to make a special video because November's election is quickly approaching, and obviously this is a video opportunity that only comes around once every four years, so I really wanted to take advantage of it. So thank you so much, and I really hope you all enjoy the video. Welcome back to 2020, I'm David Muir, and tonight I will be sitting down with former Vice President and Democratic nominee for President Joe Biden, discussing his historic VP pick, responses to attacks from his opponent, President Donald J. Trump and his supporters, what he will do to satisfy both moderate Republicans and progressive Democrats with his policies, and more in this special interview. I hope you enjoy it. Hello, hello. How you doing, Daniel? It's David, and it's so nice to see you, Mr. Vice President. You too, Darnell. And it is my honor to be back here on The Late Show. Sorry to interrupt. Just go on as if I'm not here. Uh, I'm sorry. Who are you? When prepping for this interview, we in the Biden campaign decided to put a bracelet underneath Joe's sleeve that zaps whenever I press this button, so that way we can make sure Joe doesn't talk too much, and when he does speak, we can... soften the blow. Uh... Oh, come on, Devin. My wife's just here to show support. <gasps> Ow! Okay. Well, on to our first question, your historic VP pick. Many all over the country are understandably thrilled about you choosing Senator Kamala Harris to be your running mate. If elected, she will be the first African American, first female, and first Asian American vice president. What led you to make this decision? Well, Derek, when my best friend Barack Obama was president, whenever making a really big decision, I would always be the last one in the room. And not just because I fell asleep three minutes into the meeting and nobody woke me up because they assumed, well, they couldn't. Obama, again, he's my best friend. I can't shut up about him. Hashtag Joe Obama. Let's get it number one on Saturday's newspaper stories. It will catch on in no time. But when choosing my young apprentice, I wanted somebody I could have that same experience with, and Kamala was the perfect choice. Such a touching story. But as thrilled as many are about your VP pick, a lot of people still bring up that moment from last summer's presidential debate where she went after you for opposing busing in the 1970s. Ah, 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 ah! Dylan, I'm gonna stop you right there. I can't remember anything I did 50 minutes ago, let alone 50 years. And a lot of people say that might be an issue when they go to vote. What do you say to voters who believe that you're simply too old to be answering the 3 a.m. call? Well, first of all, they can rest assured of knowing I won't be answering any calls because I don't know how to work a phone. And second of all, yes, I may be older, that's true. But with age comes wisdom. So you believe you have more wisdom than your opponent? Yes, of course. I may not know how to solve one of those Rubik's Cubes, or how to do advanced geometry, or have any idea what my own name is, but I have been in Washington for... a period of time now, and I know how to get things done. Very inspiring. Do you have a certain example from your time in Washington of you getting things done so voters can rest assured knowing that you truly have what it takes? Yes, Deborah, I do. So let me tell you about a time I had to face the odds as a senator, or maybe this is from an episode of Tom and Jerry I saw with my sister, Jill. So me and my family were all in our mushroom houses singing a happy song where all of a sudden Gargamel comes out of nowhere and chases us into a gigantic vortex. Next thing we know, we're in Manhattan and living with Doogie Howser. 
Are you not gonna? I gave up after he said Joe Obama. All right, Mr. Vice President, I'm gonna interrupt you for a moment to talk about your opponent, President Donald Trump. Okay. As you know, President Trump has tried to paint you as a senile old man, and a lot of his supporters feel the same way about you. A lot of people really like your personality and think you're a great man, but can't ignore the age factor. So what can you say right now that will ease the minds of independent and moderate Republicans who are still on the fence about who to vote for? <laughs> Come on, man! What kind of question is that? The people of the United States of Ireland know me. They know my story. When I was a little kid, me and my brother Simon and Theodore were nothing but a bunch of singing chipmunks that were homeless and hungry. But when Dave took us in, he taught me responsibility and how to grow up. And look at me now. I'm running for Senator of the United States. I do not get paid enough for this job. Okay, let's completely change the subject after hearing that. Now, running for office is already a really challenging task, but you have an extra load on you. Because not only is a lot of your campaign being run from your basement, but you also have the really daunting task of getting both moderate Republicans and progressive Democrats on board with the Biden-Harris administration if you want to win. So, how do you balance satisfying both sides whose views cannot be any more different from each other? Look, Dominic. When I was in the Senate, I was known to be one of the most bipartisan members. I was able to work with both sides of the aisle to find compromise, so nobody would really be happy in the ending. Great answer. And finally, I asked the same question to President Trump when I interviewed him last week. And that is, if the election were tomorrow, what would your final pitch be to voters about who you are and what you'll do if elected? Easy. Look, Diane. You know just as well as me that this election isn't about what I am, it's about what I'm not. I may not be perfect or fit, but when you look at the alternative option, you begin to question if God's real. Alright, what an incredible answer. So thank you all so much for watching my interview with Vice President Joe Biden. Once again, if you have not seen it, just last week we sat down with President Donald J. Trump for an interview, and it was just as scary as this one. So I thank you all for watching, and Mr. Vice President, I thank you for being here. Uh, Mr. Vice President? <laughs> I pray for this country. Hey guys, thank you all so much for watching this week's new skit. To see the behind the scenes and bloopers, the wait a few minutes. And to see the previous skit, then watch David Muir interviews Donald Trump and the behind the scenes for that very patriotic interview behind the scenes. And to see the previous political satire we made, then watch Bernie Sanders gets ice cream. All of the links for these videos will be in the description below. So thank you all so much for watching. I love you all so very much, and I'll see you all next Friday in a brand new skit. Bye! <sighs> <sighs>